All right, guys, hidden figures. I'm back. We are going to be doing chapter four today. This is called A New Beginning. In the fall of 1943, Dorothy started the school year teaching math at R.R. Malton, the Black High School in Farmville, Virginia, just as she had for the past 12 years. She loved being a teacher, and she dedicated herself to helping her students as much as she could while waiting for a response to the job application she had submitted a few months earlier. So if you remember, um, in the last chapter, she submitted a job application to um, the laundry and also to the Langley Laboratory. Dorothy had plenty to keep her busy. The high school had been built for 180 students, but more than 300 now squeezed into the classrooms. She taught algebra in the school's overcrowded auditorium with two other classes taking place in the same space. So could you imagine us being in class and you trying to listen to me teach and then have two other classes in there as well? That would be crazy. After school, she tutored students who needed more help and spent wor time working with the school's parent-teacher association. Outside of school, Dorothy was a founding member of the Farmville chapter of the NAACP, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, a civil rights group. What can we do to win the war? World War II was never far from anyone's mind. That fall, the high school's 4-H club made care packages for departing servicemen and hosted a community discussion title, What Can We Do to Win the War? The school sold war stamps to raise money for the military. The community help, held going away parties and feasts for the young men heading off to, front, off to the front lines of combat. Um, and if you remember back then, they didn't have a choice if they wanted to go to war or not. Pretty much when they turned 18, they were going whether they liked it or not. Dorothy updated her classes and added a unit called Wartime Mathematics, where she taught students how to use math to follow a household budget and manage wartime ration books, coupon books that allowed each family only a limited amount of varied supplies such as flour and sugar. Then in November, a letter from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics finally arrived. You are hereby appointed a, math a mathematician, grade P1. With that pay rate of 2000 per in, per year, the letter said, that was more than twice the 850 annual salary she earned as a teacher. When Dorothy thought about the civil service jobs she had applied for, she had mixed feelings. She was a wife and a mother of four children. The job at the Langley Laboratory was a full-time position six days a week. If she accepted the job, she would have to move four hours away from her children, and she'd only be able to come back home to see them on the holidays. But Dorothy knew this was a very good job, one that would allow her to help her family, so she accepted it. She shared the news with her family and friends. Her students were sad to see their teacher leave. The townspeople found out about Dorothy's decision when they read a notice in the Farmville section of the Norfolk Journal and Guide. It read, Ms. Fong Han, instructor in, instructor in mathematics at the high school for several years, has accepted a position at the Langley Field, Virginia. Dorothy didn't like saying goodbye. It'll be back, I'll be back before Christmas, she told her young four children. She was sad to leave them, but she knew that her children would be well cared for, well cared for in the home in Farmville. They lived in a rambling Victorian house with their grandparents, and they were surrounded by dozens of aunts and uncles and cousins. Dorothy's children would miss their mother, but their daily schedules wouldn't change. For 12 years, Dorothy had walked out of the front door and turned left to walk in the door where she had worked. But on the morning she left for her new job at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory, she turned in the opposite direction, and she didn't look back. Leaving home. Dorothy rode a Greyhound bus 137 miles from Farmville to Newport News in Virginia. While on the bus, she had plenty of time to think. What would it be like to work with white people? Would she sit side by side with young, young women like the one at the State Teachers College? How would she endure the time away from her children and family? Mile after mile, Dorothy watched the gentle hills rising and falling outside the window. She refused to feel any self-doubt. Her country needed her, and she was ready and eager to do her part to support the war effort and her family. 
Um, so that is it for chapter four. Um, I want you to tell me, do you think she should have taken the job or do you think she shouldn't have? Um, I want you to include why you think that. There's not a wrong answer here. I just want to know your thoughts behind it because we might all have different thoughts if should she leave her children? Should she leave everything she knows to go to this place that she's never been? Or um, do we think that it was a good opportunity for her and she could make um, a big impact?